Well, hi YouTube. It was requested that I explain my scope in, the, in a little more detail, which is a Tectonix TS2002B, two, two channel, 60 megahertz uh, scope. Uh, as you can see, it's a digital scope, a uh, digital storage uh, scope, uh, with one giga sample, well, sampling rate. So, for the tests, I will show you here. Uh, a little demonstration about the basic functions of the scope. Um, that's what we have time for anyway. I connected the probe to my function generator. I connected it directly to the check, so the signal is more is uh, well. It's you get a better signal here. So it's a rectangular signal. I can modify it a little. Let's see. And I can also change the curve form to sine, right, and to triangle, sine, okay. Well, one of the good features of the scope is like, I increase the frequency now, and what that scope can always do is fetching a signal you input with only one key. This is uh, the auto set key. I press auto set here, you see, and displays it right. Cool. So, whatever frequency range, you have a good overview of the signal here. So, uh, then you have this menu where you can say, show one, show me one period of the signal. Yeah, now you see one period. Yeah, show me the edges, the leading and the trailing edge. This is quite cool because if you, sh you show this, you can measure how it, how long. Uh, well, you can measure the screw rate of the signal, which we can do right now. For this, I activate uh, a cursor here. Right. It it asks me about the type. You can uh, ampl make an amplitude and a time uh, cursor. Now I do a time cursor. So I set the one. Here, about 80%, that's how you measure this. Um, right, and then uh, I take the second one about here. Yeah, and now everything that's relevant stands here. So it says me that it has uh, 48 nanoseconds rise time. Um, this, and it's uh, one through delta T is 20.83 megahertz, right? And it also shows us the delta from here to here, which is uh, wow, 26.4 volts. <laughs> no, that's not correct because I haven't set up the probe right. I suppose one minute, it's one x, but it's set up to 10 x, and uh, right, that's one of the also one of the mistakes you can do you can make so let's press out auto set again right uh okay this is those are one of the mistakes you can <laughs> make with with a scope like that um all right but still let what we can do well what can we do recording a single sequence for example um so I have a single sequence now, so it's not no longer in running mode, so now I can uh, sort of scroll through this through what I recorded. This is data that is now stored in the scope, and what what you can do man I need to go to the measure mode for that. Okay, not quite. Let's go into running mode again. Um, run stop. So now it's real signal again. <coughs> well, let's really zoom up into mm, the trailing edge now. If you are in the measure mode, you can here uh, configure the scope so you can see many of the values that are uh, relevant to the signal, like the rise time. 
we measured the rise time. Do you remember? I said it was about 22 nanoseconds. That's what it says here. It says about 23, 24 nanoseconds rise time. This is what we measured manually. Um, it doesn't know the period now because we do not display a whole period of the signal. But, uh, oh, come on. Uh, Okay, so it's a period of 103 microseconds, which comes down to 9.7 something kilohertz, which you, you can read here, and it has 4.28 volts peak peak current from here to here. All right. Um, okay, I wanted to zoom into the trailing edge, so I just change. Uh, the diff now it's 2.5 microseconds. I go down to 250 nanoseconds. Uh, no, that's not the one I need. I don't want need. Yeah, well, there we go. Let's make it 100 nanoseconds, uh, and now it's 50 nanoseconds. Ah, now we can see it. the trailing edge of a rectangular signal. So you see when, once it changes it, it, it takes a little time to swing in, sort of. And if you lose lo uh, use long uh, cables, like uh, uh, that cable for example, uh, it, w it would swing more wildly. You see it, it doesn't swing so hard. But uh, let's quite normal what you would expect. Okay. So much for that scope. As I already told, uh, you can do maths, like uh, you can do uh, a, Fourier, a Fourier analysis, uh, and you, of course you have two uh, channels. You can use an external trigger, you can record a single sequence and scroll through the data that was recorded. Um, you can add complex triggers, like trigger once, uh, say, the amplitude is uh, below or beyond some level and such stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. Well, I hope that helped you a little to see some of the features of the scope. It's, it's quite cool, and if you use it in conjunction with microcontrollers, which I, you, uh, what I usually do, it's, it's a really perfect scope for the, for the matter.